I'd like to call the Budget Review Committee to order. It's September 5th, 2017. We're in the automatic chamber, and it is 7.03 p.m. Would the clerk please call the roll? Yes, sir. Um, Alderman Richard A. Dowd, Chair. Present. Notice I'm mentioning you first because I always <laughs> leave you at the end. Yeah. Alderman at Large, Lori Wilshire. Here. Alderman at Large, Brian S. McCarthy. Present. Oh, um, McCarthy, I'm sorry. And Alderman Michael B. O'Brien. Present. Alderman David Shoneman. Here. Alderman Ken Siegel. Present. And Alderman Sean McGinnis. Yes, I'm here. They're all here. So it looks everyone's present. Do we oh. have any guests other than no? It's all yours. Okay. Um, first item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, anybody sitting in the public, I uh, don't see is going to say anything here. Communications? Yes, sir. There are, uh, there's a communication from Mayor Jim Donches regarding FYI 2018 like-for-like -like escrows. Do I hear a motion to accept and place on file? No. Okay. Motion. motion is to accept and place on file. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Unfinished business. Uh, there is none. New business resolutions. Yes, sir. There is a resolution R17-121, uh, sponsored by Mayor Jim Donches, relative to the reappropriation of fiscal year 2018 escrows. Is there a motion? All of will share. Yes, for the sake of discussion, I'll move to recommend final passage. Okay. Okay. All right. The motion on the floor is to um, accept final passage of our 17-121. Before we have discussion, I'd like to call the mayor and anyone from his staff up here that would like to make a presentation. <laughs> Directors. <laughs> Yeah. They're not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> They're on their cell phones. I guess for protocol, everybody knows who you are, but you ought to. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Chair, you have before you uh, Resolution 17121, mm -hmm. and uh, we're here to, I mean, some of these things are pretty self-evident. There are quite a, the whole top level are re-escrows, uh, but um, uh, if you would like to, uh, excuse me, some of the top level are re-escrows, uh, but we are here to answer any questions that you or any members of the committee might have. Okay, is everyone on the committee? I think everyone should be aware of what we're doing here. Alderman Truman, did you have a question? Uh, no, I was just Okay, oh, all right. Um, so does anyone have any questions relative to the um, request by the mayor? Alderman Siegel. Um, yeah, I just need some explanations of things, unfortunately. So, or fortunately, um, line 10, the... Uh, Cost of infrastructure improvement sidewalks, uh, which infrastructure is being improved, and, this, and what, what about the sidewalks? Um, thank you. So this is money that previously had been escrowed for the downtown sidewalks. Now that those funds are not required for that, so this is a repurpose of an existing escrow, and it would be repurposed into sidewalk repair, uh, any type of new sidewalk construction that the Board of Public Works or the Department of Public Works would undertake, but also would serve to supplement any infrastructure projects that we have if there were additional costs or unanticipated costs. Um, you know, if we were working on the bridge and it, it cost a little extra, we could take the money from here. So this is, as an example, so this is just a general transfer from one sort of infrastructure use to another uh, and would be focused largely on sidewalks than any other infrastructure project that uh, required 
some kind of supplement. So just to continue, that's citywide. Yes, citywide. Okay. This this is a neighborhood initiative, so to speak. This covers all neighborhoods. This would not be spent on downtown sidewalks, but would be repurposed to serve all nine wards. Okay, thank you. Alder Mingus, did you have a question? Oh, oh I just had a, a, an observation. Really, a lot of the money that goes into sidewalks is usually collected from builders, and isn't there an extra? They want to do something. We usually kind of ask them for a contribution to the fund. Well, when a when a builder develops a subdivision or you know a, a house or two, yeah. uh, yes, they are generally required or often required by the planning board to install a sidewalk in front of their property. But yeah. this, but we have many existing sidewalks uh, in the city uh, that need repairs and all over the place. For example, we just got a call um, within the last week from someone who observed that the sidewalk on Concord Street between uh, the Greeley Park and just north of there is in really bad shape. And so when people park, and this is on the west side of the street, so when people park to along Concord further up north of Greeley to walk to Greeley and this is an older citizen uh, she pointed out that uh, there's all kind of rough spots in there and um, people can trip get hurt that kind of thing so now Public Works is looking at that and will evaluate the situation but as an example that is a section of sidewalk that could be repaired and I only mention it because we just got a call on that but there are many sidewalks being fixed all over the city and that's where this would be directed. Thank you, sir. Alderman Schoenman. Thank you. Um, sticking with that same line for a moment, that $203,000, what was the escrow amount on that last year? Presumably we took it from fiscal 16 to 17 and 17 to 18. Was that spent it, down at all? I think it's the same amount. I don't know, could John, uh, Mr. Griffin? To the extent there was any expenditure, John Griffin for the record, CFO, um, to the extent there was any expenditures minor, I believe, uh, on the Main Street project, it would have drawn down that amount. But I could certainly get you what that beginning balance was. Uh, would, the, would this amount have been only usable for Main Street last year? Or could it also have been used for any of the nine wards? It, uh, the purpose of the escrow going from a specific project such as Main Street to a general citywide sidewalk project is, is for that purpose, so it could not have been used last year for any other purpose other than Main Street. Okay, so we're not just <clears throat> moving it. Okay, I understand. Can so I, now, can this I year, can it I can go to the nine wards. It could be that uh, the, some of the, I think the last of the islands was completed in this past year, so maybe some of the funds went for that, uh, something like that, but it was, uh, about the same amount of money, and what we're saying is we're not going to spend two hundred thousand on the downtown sidewalks. Let's use it for a citywide, uh, citywide help with sidewalk conditions. Okay, thank you, Alderman McCarthy. Yeah, this is, this is money that started out as a general fund appropriation and not from the sidewalk funds, correct? Uh, yes, correct. Alderman Wilshire. Oh, I had another completely different matter. Are you all set on? Yeah. Okay. You have, um, Mayor, on here, $150,000 financials from debt service to transfer to the city building's expendable trust fund, 150000 And then you have a couple other lines here where you're uh, transferring money into aldermanic, cham aldermanic chamber improvements. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. The aldermanic chamber improvements are simply escrowing money that uh, has been allocated to that purpose and I think in the past uh, and was requested by the Board of Aldermen. Uh, I, you haven't done improvements so they might, so no money has been used but my custom is if the Board of Aldermen asks for money for their own purposes I usually uh, go along with that. Uh, and um, the, and that, what was the other one? The 150000 to the city buildings. It, Expendable trust fund. So we have an expendable trust fund to take care of city buildings. Um, 
any repairs that are required here or a roof somewhere else, the fire station, the, the central fire station, uh, any other city buildings. Uh, we've drawn down on that trust fund uh, a bit during the course of the last year. Uh, it did have about $500,000. That's been reduced, so I'm proposing that we put more money, we, we replace some of that money and um, have a reserve that we can use for uh, necessary repairs or improvements. One very expensive project that this could go for that we've been able to avoid is the, for example, the replacement of the city hall uh, elevator, which at one point was looked like it was in really bad shape. And it seemed that uh, we might have to use this fund to replace the elevator. That would have been $190,000. But uh, uh, Jay was able to work with a vendor to repair the project, to repair the elevator, so we didn't need to spend that money. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that we would use the fund, we, we use the fund for. Any kind of major expenditure, of course, uh, we would come to the Finance Committee for approval of the contract. Uh, anything certainly $10,000 $10, or more. Do we know how much is in that fund now? It was about a half a million. Okay. And I also wanted to ask about the CMAC matching fund, $100,000. If you could give us uh, an explanation on that. Uh, now, Sarah can give you, uh, Ms. Marshan can give you more details, but the rail trail right now uh, heading east ends, of course, at Main Street right by City Hall. And we are applying for a CMAC grant to extend the rail trail to the east, we own the land, but there's no rail trail there, to extend the rail trail to the east to go pretty much uh, not all the way to the river, but a long way towards the river. And we think that uh, were we successful in getting the grant, uh, it would probably be around $400,000. There is a 20% local match, so 20% uh, of a total of 500 is, of course, 100. So were we successful in getting the grant, we would use $100,000 from this uh, escrow as well as $400,000 from the CMAC grant that we would be awarded by uh, the state. Thank you. I don't know. Can, is that... Yeah, you that is very, how, yeah. far, how far east would it go? <laughs> it will go all the way to the 25 Crown Street station. Um, and so it would also include that um, former railroad bridge that um, is currently gated off behind the fire station that needs to be improved. And so um, it, is, it is an attempt to finish it in its entirety. Yes, and we do own all the land already. Alderman Shillerman. Um, why does that fall under welfare assistance? Well, that's where the money's coming from. That's where the money's coming from. So there was unexpended money in welfare. So we're so it's going, going to community development. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think Sarah answered my question. So Paul Wilshire. The money coming from welfare, don't we typically put it in the welfare trust fund? Or do we have a plethora of money in the welfare trust fund? <laughs> I don't know that we typically put it into wealth, the welfare trust fund, but I could, I could answer Mr. that, uh, Mayor. The trust fund. Uh, I'm just going to go back a little bit in time. Uh, as of two, uh, sub, June 30th, 2010, it had about 355,000 in it. Since then, the only thing that's gone in there is the interest on the fund. So right now, it's got uh, 350. Nine thousand six hundred seventy-two dollars. So we haven't, we haven't had to dip into it, nor have we added thing, anything to it. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, Brian. Thank you. Uh, if we could step back a bit, I'm um, intrigued with the putting that rail trail expanding. I think that's going to be great, but. Uh, I was thinking most of the firemen, that's the place where they work, but that's the place where they live as well. Would there be some form of fencing security because their backyard encroaches very, very close to that where the rail trail will be? And I know that they do have some of their equipment out in the back, and I'm just wondering for the uh, concern of that. 
Uh, absolutely, that would be addressed as part of the project, and um, we are hoping to fund lighting at the same time <laughs> that's not solar um, with this initial project as well. So the goal would be, it would be certainly a very public process. CMAX stands for Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Funding, um, and so it would have to follow the LPA and NHDOT standards, so yes. Yeah. Additional questions, Alderman Schoenman. Thank you. <clears throat> Can we... I'd like to hear about um, line <clears throat> 24, the rail strategic plan for $100,000. What are we going to do with that? What do we hope to learn that we don't already know? Uh, Tim can give you more of the details, but <coughs> we've proposed that the city form a rail transit authority uh, to look at different options. I mean, we've been stymied at the state level in terms of the entire capital corridor project, which would go to the city of Manchester. We could, if we, if we develop an alternative, if, or we need to evaluate the question of uh, whether rail service could come just to Nashua, and uh, this could help to examine that question. Um, any use of the funds would still require at least finance committee approval, because it could not be expended without you know, a contract, basically. Uh, but I will let Tim supplement that answer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, Director Cummings. Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development for the city. Uh, essentially what this would be is uh, seed money to help uh, the, the steering committee uh, with their work if it's so the desire of this body to to approve the legislation that's coming before you on the 12th. Uh, essentially, uh, what you, we would be doing is uh, essentially taking a lot of the work that has been done at the state level with their planning exercises and, and their studies and um, localizing it um, for Nashua, making sure we look at um, O&M, capital, um, and other types of uh, technical analysis that would be necessary to give us the data necessary to even understand whether uh, it's feasible or, or not for us to even entertain this this uh, idea. Thank you, Alderman Chairman. Thanks. Uh, it sounds like legislation is coming next week to the foot being introduced first reading. Is that what you said, Director Cummins? Uh, I believe there's legislation. Um, before you to promulgate a rail study committee that was in personnel, it was favorably okay. recommended, and you have final reading on it on the 12th. Okay. I meant to spend money, so it's not a resolution to spend money, it's a resolution to form the no. committee. Right. right. Okay. Um, I guess I, I just wonder, as finance will consider this ultimately, what more are we going to learn? If, if the plan is to bring it up from Lowell to Nashua, um, Massachusetts, I presume, would would pay for that from Lowell to Nashua? Or is there a possibility that Nashua could be asked to pay for part of that? Um, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we don't have any of those answers yet. That's part of what this plan uh, would help address is bringing some of those answers to us so we could evaluate them uh, appropriately. Uh, to date, as far as I know, uh, the city of Nashua has not had any conversations with the MBTA or any other uh, entity that runs rail um, on behalf of uh, uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Department of Transportation, or, or whatnot. So we would be looking to start those types of conversations, understand what the market may be to help us understand um, what our, uh, what the magnitude would be for us. I had also just want to caution that the, what was studied at the uh, state level in its entirety was from Lowell to Concord. Okay. Owen O'Brien. Yes, so Mr. Cummings, if I may, uh, this would also include us capable of capturing any federal grants that may be out there for this uh, rail type of study. Is that correct, independent of the state? Correct, Cummings. Correct. Part of the scope would uh, absolutely articulate the differing type of funding sources that would be available um, at the federal level. Okay. Additional questions, Alderman Siegel. Uh, where did the hundred thousand dollar figure come from? So I um, thank you. Uh, so I uh, reached out to a couple rail consultants um, and started to get just an order of magnitude type budget um, based off of a draft scope um, that helped me understand what the um, magnitude could be for us to procure the type of data that we would need. Okay, Alderman Siegel, follow up. Um, 
how much would it cost for people to inquire of the MBTA, you know, just on the committee, for example? Director Cummings? Or? No. Director Cummings. Yep, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, nothing um, would, would uh, stop us from being able to just make an inquiry into the MBTA, but having additional conversations and understanding what may be necessary to be able to bring uh, a positive resolution for everyone. I think we would need some sort of expert. Uh, I don't think the city of Nashua to date has a rail expert in house. So some outside consultant to help us understand um, the technicalities of the conversation. Okay. Additional questions? Alderman Schoenemann. So we're not anticipating learning about different ridership numbers or nothing like that. There's nothing changing. It's just where Direct a station would go, that kind of thing, and what kind of parking lot or... Director Cummings? Uh, uh, thank you. I, I think you would see uh, a very um, quick review or, or analysis to make sure what was done at the state level in terms of their market was actually feasible for Nashville for it to be localized. Again, a lot of uh, the state of New Hampshire did was predicated off of a bigger sub-market, so we'd want to just verify that type of data that was done, but I don't think we would be getting too uh, in the weeds on that. We would really be looking to understand the capital and the capital costs um, to complement the O&M. Additional questions? Alderman Siegel. Um, the uh, Burke Street Association dues and fire pump assessment, um, is, what, what's that? Mayor? So when we bought the, the Burke Street facility, uh, a contract was entered with two other property owners to jointly pay for a pump that will service the sprinklers in all, all of the three, three buildings. I mean, our buildings plus others owned by the private, by private party. So this is a partnership with two private owners split three ways. The total cost of the pump service for a year is like 36,000 or something like that, about that figure. Mm -hmm. Three times the, uh, the 12,000. So it's about 37,000. And we, on, pursuant to that agreement, pay one third and that's where this money would go. What is this Burke Street Association dues? It's $12,000 a year, 12, 12, four. Oh, because it says dues and fire pump assessment. Well, so it's a, it's the same. And the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's why I was kind of confused. Okay. Additional, additional questions. Alderman Schoenemann. Thank you. Um, I'd like to learn a little bit more about line twenty six, the uh, river water fountains for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The um, when we did the riverfront study, and this is going to be presented to the board for adoption in the near future. We held a number, we received and solicited a lot of public comment and we've received a lot of public interest. Many people were supportive and really excited about bringing forward uh, a plan for the enhancement, the development of the riverfront with more river walks and the like. I think uh, Ms. Marchant can, can answer uh, again how many people responded, but I believe we had over 2,000 people people respond, 2,000 inputs into what should be done, and the most sought after item was river fountains near the Main Street Bridge. There has been one in the past, it's sort of failed at this point, and so we put in this figure to help fund or to fund the, the first stage possibly of riverfront development with the item that was most sought after by the public. I don't know, Ms. Marchand, do you have? Director Marchand, do you want to sure. add? Yes, thank you. Um, so the, the downtown uh, master plan is going to the planning board at their meeting next week on the 14th for adoption and will follow coming through the full board of aldermen. Um, the number of comments that related um, Rhode Island's fire water um, and the idea of encouraging people to continue to walk down along the river walk um, and engage much further um, with significant fountains and lighting was 
astonishing. Um, and people at every meeting we went to on the feedback online, people wanted to see a lot more of this and they felt like it would really open up the river. It would make it much more pedestrian friendly, bike friendly, um, getting people walking and moving along the river and not just passing by it. Um, and that it would also bring people downtown. And so um, this was an item um, as part of the project. We got cost estimates of the priorities um, and that's where this number comes from. Follow-up? Yes, how many fountains are we talking about? This is three um, or a series of them. I mean, this would go through, um, certainly we'd have to do an RFP. There's as many options as you could probably think of out there, but the idea was to have something that kind of continued down the river that would engage you, so that you could see from the Main Street Bridge, but wasn't just a one-stop shop. It was a, something that you could see walking, moving down and engaging along rivers. Uh, like the other items, to expend this money, we'd still have to come back to, to the Finance Committee and present the plans and everything. Mm -hmm. Additional questions? Alderman Siegel? Um, it's my understanding, because I, 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 I'm giving the, the mayor clarify for me, um, that this greenhouse gas emission study is actually not a greenhouse gas emission study as much as it is. It's just looking at the buildings in Nashua to make them more energy efficient. Oh, okay. that, that's Fair. correct. So we It's have not a, like we have a Nashua local global warming study. <laughs> is that correct? <laughs> but this is not uh, applied to that. Um, we have a number of people looking at trying the city trying to save energy costs as well as reduce emissions, both objectives. Uh, Madeline Minot has been very focused and involved with this, along with the Energy Committee, Energy and Environment Committee, which we appointed uh, to help advise the city. And they believe, Madeline and the members of the committee, believe that there are savings that could be achieved through making buildings, for example, the police station and other buildings, more efficient. And it seems that there are two ways to go with this. One is to hire out and sort of sell the, you know, a portion of the savings to a private sector company who kind of comes in and does everything and manages it all, but then they take a big share of the savings. The other is to look at it independently via a con consultant or something like that through, through a consultant that can advise the city, okay, you should do X, Y, and Z. If we proceed in that manner, which, was, which this suggests, we would ultimately realize more savings because we wouldn't have to share it with the private sector company that comes in and kind of dictates what's going to happen. Okay. Alderman McCarthy. Is this a different set of buildings than the ones we had the Jordan Institute look at some years back? I think the last study was in uh, 2010, 2009. Yes, uh, Ms. Marshan. Director Marshall. Um, so m many of the items in the Jordan Institute report, um, that's the first thing that the Energy and Environment Committee and Madeline have started with. Um, we've done a lot of things with those, but there's still a whole, um, we've also built new buildings. We've also, um, we've seen a lot of savings from those, but there's significantly more we can do. And so this goes towards the next steps from that Jordan Institute study. And so that was a kind of a starting place that we realized we don't have updated information and we could do a lot more. I guess I'd just comment that when we had that done, the city had a number of buildings, including this one, analyzed, and I don't remember what everything else was. I think Court Street may have been one of them, and um, the Hunt Building and some of the older structures. We had a bunch of the schools done at the time yeah. and have been fixing them since. And the the actual I mean, actual numbers that we see in the, in the energy savings in the schools have been fairly phenomenal compared to what it costs to do the envelope analysis. So I think that that's probably a, a very good investment if, if we're going to do something along the same lines. To follow up on that, I think yes. we just saw that the last five schools renovated have saved between 25 to 40 percent of their energy costs on an annual basis. So this is real dollars that we're looking to save um, over time. And, it's and pretty I, just, phenomenal. I, I just commented that the things we did to get that in the schools are not very expensive things. It was just um, closing gaps in the building envelope, putting insulation around 
the edge of the foundation and stuff that was really in the scheme of what we spent on the HVAC renovations, fairly short money to get a lot of energy back. Yes. Even years ago, we had, uh, when I was on the Board of Ed, we had a person, I think his name was Steidel, who we used to call the Prince of Darkness. Uh, he made the school's energy efficient as to lighting and saved tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of his going from building to building. Also, while I was at BAE, they did an extensive energy savings uh, program to the point where, for instance, in this building, the middle lights are on all the time, but you could put a sensor so they're not on unless somebody walks through the chamber. Um, things like that um, are in, in our offices. Uh, if you, there wasn't movement, the lights went out, so you knew you weren't working if the lights went out. So. <laughs> It's amazing how often the lights go off in 208 when you're in a meeting. Yeah. In there. <laughs> Very sensitive. O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Uh, to Ms. Marshawn, uh, we do have many buildings that have that. I have some experience with the fire stations. Will this, or perhaps should it, morph into one contractor for the city that's familiar with all the type of systems? So, and that would lead into, uh, it's a mechanical <coughs> type of system. There are fan belts that break and stuff like that. Uh, would there be any target savings if we morphed into uh, one contractor to take care of all of our needs in this? I think that's that's something that we've been looking at. What we understand is that um, when you go with one contractor you kind of, for all of your buildings, then you commit to that product for all of your buildings, and that they take a percentage of the savings to pay themselves, which is completely reasonable. Um, we have some in-house expertise. Madeline is pretty phenomenal and understands a lot of this. And so we think if we can do some energy audits on what are our, say, top three biggest building users that we know of out there, then we can make very targeted decisions to decide our number one energy user, let's look and see what we can do there and kind of do this in a process that gets the city the most bang for the buck. So that's our hope right now. questions? Alderman Shoneman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'd like to um, hear about lines 28 and 29, the uh, marketing plan and the business database. Director Cummings. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, for the record, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development. Just very quickly, um, when I first came into the Office of Economic Development, I did a quick overview and assessment of some of standard tools that I've seen along my way that should be um, in a just a standard uh, economic development office. Um, one of them is a program that you've funded uh, in the operational budget called CoStar. Um, the other is a one-time expense for this uh, business database that um, cities and towns procure that help uh, give you the, the data necessary in terms of understanding who is actually in your, in your market. It's a very detailed um, type of database that um, one can procure and, and use to their uh, to, to for their for their differing services, so I thought that it was necessary for us to have. Uh, the second is uh, relative to the marketing plan. Um, so um, going through the strategic planning exercises uh, here in the city, and that's an ongoing conversation. Economic development and marketing uh, has seemed to rise to the top as a major priority. This is just an effort to get a little bit ahead of that where we'll be looking to promote the city uh, in various different ways. The plan hasn't been um, crafted just yet, uh, but we know that that will be an ambition that, that will be coming together over the next year, where we'll be looking to promote uh, the city as being open for business and uh, a, a great place for one to live, work, and play. Additional questions? Alderman Shoneman. Thank you. Um, line 14, the bridge rehabilitation program. What do we need to have for bridges that are problematic and what's the plan there? Uh, we have two bridges that we're working on. Number one, uh, the pedestrian bridge that goes to the Penacheck Middle School. Number two, the Canal Street Bridge. We had some funds escrowed, I think, from last year. I believe the number was 117,000, but I'm not sure. Then there were more funds appropriated in this current budget, but to make sure we have enough to do both projects, this 32,000 is required. So what this, I think the, the, the pedestrian bridge is largely finished, so really this funding goes to the Canal Street Bridge. Now that's on the red list. It 
the cost uh, is between 150 and 200,000. It's on the red list, and it needs to be fixed. So this will provide the final funds necessary to do the fix, assess and do the fix. Alderman Schulman. But being on the red list and being a bridge on a road, some of those funds are from are from the state, are they not? Or is it all city funds? It's all city funds because it, we could seek state funding for this, but we would be since there are so many bridges on the red list, we'd be so far down on the list that it would be at least a decade before the before they get to us. If you know, if they can, if 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 if, so uh, we have budgeted money to just proceed with the repair and this is just the there was a significant amount in the budget uh, for this and for this and the other project and this again the 32,000 enables us to have enough to finish I go by the Henry Burke bridge pedestrian bridge almost every day and sometimes multiple times. I was amazed at how much work had to be done on that bridge. And when they were done, did they give us any indication as to the causes of the degradation? And was there anything that we could do to help prevent that going forward? Uh, I would need to ask Public Works about that, which I would be glad to do. OK, thank you. Another Back to the Canal Street, another reason is Canal Street is a, is a very heavily traveled road street that is right next to the state's biggest employer, BAE, private employer at least, as I understand it. Certainly the city's by far the biggest. So we just thought it's important to get the work done rather than wait indefinitely for someone else to come forward. Additional questions? <coughs> Alderman Schoenemann. Thank you. Um, this question about the overall surplus, the fiscal note reminds us that any approved escrows decrease surplus at fiscal's year end. Um, where is the surplus at and how are, we, how are we looking at with that overall? How is that trending? If we, if we do these escrows, how is our surplus trending this year compared to last year and what does that mean for potential tax rates? Who wants to answer that? Well, there's a memo from me to you on this. The, there are a million and a half of additional unappropriated funds that would go to the tax rate, plus a portion of the escrow, uh, excuse me, a portion of the revenues which exceeded the budget estimates. So we believe that if we follow the plan that was forwarded to you in the memo, that we will achieve a 2.9% tax rate increase. Now, I would add to that, you know, that $2 million without, you know, with the pensions that we got hit with, for if, if we didn't have that, the, the, the tax rate increase would be significantly below 2%. So anyway, the, 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 uh, the plan as we've proposed it to you, we think would result in a 2.9% increase. Uh, $1.5 million of unappropriated revenues would be applied to the tax, tax rate. Unexpended appropriations would be a tie. Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Um, we are proposing that we have, an, in addition to the money that's escrowed here, there's a million and a half dollars of unexpended appropriations, which would be directed to reducing the tax rate or holding the tax rate down, as well as some of the revenues which exceeded projections would also be directed. Uh, to that purpose, and if the recommendation of the memo is followed, we will have a 2.9 percent tax increase. We believe. Additional should, should questions, yeah. Alderman Schoenman. Thank you, and if I haven't seen the memo, forgive me. But um, so, what was our surplus last year compared to what it is this year? I can probably take that, Mayor. Um, last year, as you may recall, we appropriated through the escrow process three three major items. One was putting money into the pension trust reserve. One was putting money into the city buildings account, and the other one was putting money in SURF. So the 
so we, we ended up with no appropriations unspent towards the tax rate. Fortunately, we had enough revenue surplus to buy down the tax rate. If my memory serves me correct, it was about a $3.6 million application of the revenue surplus to the tax rate. And as you may recall, the tax rate came in a 2.2% increase. Additional questions? Seeing none, the motion on the floor is on R17-121. It's relative to the reappropriation of fiscal year FY 2018 escrows. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Thank you. Chair. New business ordinances. Uh, there are none. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to take up anything. Table no, committee. Uh, General discussion. Seeing none. Public comment. We have no members of the public. Remarks by Alderman. Go Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good one. Okay. Yep. Yes. <laughs> we don't need a non-public. Do we have a motion? Adjourn. Alderman Wilshire made a motion to uh. adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 744. Okay.